Hey everybody, here is a video on how to properly set up your Jazz Master. They can be pretty intimidating to work on, so I'll try to take the confusion out of it. We'll go through frets, how to take care of your fretboard, how to properly set up your trim unit. If you have scratchy electronics, uh, we'll take care of those. Restringing, intonation, and general basic setup. So here we go. Here I'm just going to fast forward through taking the old strings off. Before you take them off, please make a note of how much forward bow or back bow your guitar neck has so you have a general idea on how to set it up while the strings or the neck is off the guitar. As you take the screws off, um, you'll see here I'm using a magnet to keep all the screws together so I don't lose anything during the setup process. I'm also taking off the Fender Jazzmaster trem unit. This is a panorama trem to show you underneath. And as you can see, I have the spring that Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum recommends to buy. Here I am desoldering the ground wire from the copper shielding I have in the cavity. You also have to take the pickups off to be able to take the pick guard off. So that's what I'm doing here. And the copper shielding that I'm using is actually copper tape that I bought off of eBay. The pickup foam that I'm using is weather stripping. You can get that from any hardware store or off of eBay. And by eBay, I mean Amazon. Here I'm taking off the neck bolts to get the neck plate off. A lot of people are afraid of taking the neck off a Fender guitar, but I don't want you to be scared. They're meant to be taken off. You also have to take them off to adjust the truss rod because it is at the heel of the guitar neck. So here, righty tighty, lefty loosey applies, right to tight, left to loosen. And then loosening brings the neck to a forward bow and tightening brings it to a back bow. There's a lot of methods to protect the neck uh, before polishing the frets, but the best way for me is to tape it off with uh, low-tack painter's tape or masking tape. Also, if I sound like I'm out of breath while doing this voiceover, it's because I was just doing the gritty for about 30 minutes with my kids. So there you go, the gritty. If you don't know what the gritty is, uh, I would suggest you Google it. I'm using a Stumac fret eraser as my initial fret polish uh, process. This takes off any oxidation or anything that builds up on the frets. So yeah, now's the time to take a break. Don't rush through the process. Enjoy a drink. Here I'm enjoying a Topo Chico. I'm applying the fret polish and polishing with a Dremel. Choose a fret polish uh, thing or goop or whatever you want to use of your choice. Now that the frets are polished, I'm taking the tape off, cleaning off any residue. And I love to use Music Nomad F1 fretboard oil. Rub that in. Use any cloth. Now we're putting the neck back on the guitar. And this guy said he read the story and told his wife and he got choked up. This was the part where my wife shared a sad story. I'd love to tell you what the story is, but I don't think we have the time to do that right now. Take another break. Enjoy a Topo Chico. Before putting the pickguard back on, if you have scratchy pots, use deoxit, spray it in there, and rotate that shaft. Now it's time to solder the ground wire back onto the copper shielding. That's the one for the bridge pickup. Now I'm going to solder the ground wire from the neck pickup here next. So there are so many freaking wires under a Jazzmaster pickguard that it's going to take some finagling to get the pickguard back on. 
tucking the wires under and everything, no matter how well you organize it, it's always a little bit of a challenge. Now it's time to put everything back together. Aren't you glad you used a magnet to collect all the screws? I would have lost all them. I would have lost all my screws if I didn't have the magnet. Yeah. As always, I'm using Ernie Ball Paradigm 11 to 48 strings. They're great because they have reinforced ball ends. The high E will not unravel when using the Jazzmaster trim. I'm cutting a string. Make sure the length of the string is going past one, two, and then you cut there. Next, tune the guitar to pitch. On a Jazzmaster, the bridge is floating. So what you want to do is adjust the bridge to the center of the thimble, center position. Next, I'm intonating the guitar here. You need a very good tuner to do this process, uh, preferably a strobe tuner. So the Polytune 3 has a strobe function and it's very accurate, so you can use that. So to intonate, I am playing, picking the 12th fret harmonic and then uh, picking the 12th fret fretted note. If they match, that's great. You are intonated, the string is intonated. But if they don't match, let's say the fretted note is flat, then you want to bring that saddle forward towards the neck. If it is sharp, you want to bring the saddle away from the neck towards the back of the guitar. So move it back, move it forward until the string is intonated. This is a tedious process. I usually intonate in playing position, uh, so I make sure that the neck isn't having any sort of gravitational pull towards the earth. But here, for the sake of the video, I'm doing it on my workbench. I already have the height of the bridge adjusted pretty well on this guitar, but if you wanted to adjust, you can bring the bridge up and down via the post screws. Next, I'm checking the string height at the low E and the high E. Rule of thumb for me, 1.75 millimeters on the low E and 1.4 millimeters on the high E is great. On this part, I am checking the relief on the neck and it looked pretty straight. So here's the part on how to set up your trem lock on the Jazzmaster. Press the trem arm down and engage the trem lock and tune everything to pitch. After the guitar is in tune, go ahead and give a little tug upwards on the trem arm. If you have no room, make sure to loosen the trem unit spring screw with a Phillips screwdriver and pull up again. If you have too much room where you can tug it up and it makes a knocking sound, then tighten that screw until that knocking sound is gone and your trem lock is properly set up. So if you break a string and the trem tension goes away because the lack of tension on the trem unit, then you put the trem lock on and it'll stay in tune. At this point, I would go through the lower frets and the upper frets to see if there are any dead notes or notes that are being choked out and adjust accordingly. And after that, we can move on to the trem arm. As you can see, my trem arm doesn't look like the Fender trem arm out of the factory. It has two bends in it. What I do is I make a little jig out of my workbench. I drill a hole about the size of a trem arm. And I put it in and make the bends that I want to make. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Well, there you have it. That's a setup on the Jazzmaster. I'm making hand motions in the video that I pre-recorded to make it look like I'm talking live, but it's really a voiceover, hand motions. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It'll help me out a lot. And until next time, my name is Che, and this is Lounging Guitars.